and welcome to horseradar.co.uk. We're at International Event Rider Flora Harris's yard, where we're joined today by Sarah Elphick from Spinners. Sarah is Flora's nutritionist, and we're going to be talking to her about the options, methods, and science behind what, how, and when to feed your horse and pony. We'll cover everything from native ponies through to competition horses, from young stock through to elderly horses, and we'll try and separate some of the facts from fiction about feeding. Now, Bob here in his natural habitat would be feeding around 18 to 22 hours a day on natural forage. Why then is it important for us with our domesticated horses to feed additional forage or supplement their feeds? Horses that are kept in domestic situations, generally speaking, only have access to forage a certain part of the day. Um, horses in the wild will tend to eat a variety of grasses, different plants, which means they get a cross-section of vitamins and minerals. Horses that only have access to forage for part of the day sometimes are lacking in certain vitamins and minerals, and therefore we would usually recommend that those horses are supplemented with either a broad-spectrum vitamin and mineral supplement or some compound feed as well. Okay. So if Bob here was an all-round horse, let's say I exercised him maybe three times a week, I did a little bit of hacking, a little bit of unaffiliated show jumping, Firstly, how would I calculate exactly how much feed he would need? Okay. We tend to work on um, a figure of about 2% of body weight for a horse in medium work um, in terms of their total diet. So we would sit down and work out how much time they spend at grass and therefore how much grass they're eating, how much forage they're provided with, um, and work out therefore what we need to supplement with um, hard feed. Um, for a horse in medium or light work, we would usually prefer the horse to have up to 100% forage, um, but certainly 80% forage, 20% hard feed. Um, we wouldn't really want to cut the forage back to any less than that, which will then give you the figure of, of hard feed that that horse would require. Okay, uh, and what type of feed then would be would be suitable for, for an all-round type horse? Well, every horse is an individual. Um, some need more calories than others. Calories and energy are the same thing. So it's working out how much work that horse is doing, if it's a good doer, or if it needs additional calories to, to keep weight on it. Um, so we'd probably be looking at about two kilograms of feed, hard feed per day, split between at least two meals. Um, and we'd be looking for something probably with fairly low energy and a, a low starch level um, as well. So it, does that give my horse or my pony all the nutritional requirements they need or is there an argument to, to supplement their feed with say um, a balancer or glucosamine for their joints or garlic for their digestion or something like that? If a horse is receiving a full um, recommended amount of compound feed from a reputable feed company, usually those feeds are fully vitamin and mineral spec. So the horse will receive all it requires from the hard feed. If you're feeding less than the recommended amount or you're feeding an economy feed, sometimes in those situations we would recommend adding a balancer. Um, and if the horse is feeding pure, being fed purely a forage-based diet, once again, we would recommend a feed balancer to ensure the horse is getting all its um, daily vitamins and minerals. There are certain, um, certain vitamins and minerals that you wouldn't want to overfeed and with supplements um, you know, for example garlic you can feed too much garlic which can cause problems so we would always recommend people take professional advice before adding too many vitamin um, supplements to their diet horse's diet if we move up a level then let's say we've gone from our all-round horse let's say i start competing him uh, maybe an affiliated discipline and i've gone from three days a week to five days a week exercise levels uh, at what period does a horse's feeding and nutritional requirements increase a horse that's just stepped up from three to five days of work wouldn't change an awful lot. Um, again, every horse is an individual. Monitor weight closely. Um, you know whether your horse has got enough energy. It will tell you whether it's tired or not. Um, and it might well be that we would change the forage to concentrate ratio slightly. Um, and it might go from being 80% forage to 70 with a 30% uh, hard feed ratio. Um, and we would tend to feed a little more rather than stepping up in terms of the, the type of feed that you fed to start with. So, so it would be quantity of the same feed rather than changing a feed that's, would be the first step? That's where we would start. Okay. It, yes. and, and you mentioned weight. Is that, is that really the telltale sign of whether my horse is going to need additional feed or is it is it your energy levels or do they work together? Yeah, the energy and calories are exactly the same thing. So a horse will start to lose weight if it needs more energy. If you take competition horses then, you've got your three main disciplines, dressage, show jumping and eventing. 
Um, how do they differ in terms of the nutritional requirements for horses competing at those specific disciplines? When horses are competing at the top of the three disciplines, we tend to find that they all have slightly different requirements. Um, dressage horses and show jumpers require sort of short, sharp bursts of energy, um, whereas your three-day eventer clearly requires much more stamina um, and longevity of energy. So we're looking at fast-release energy versus a slower, um, more sustainable energy for the event horse. And, and if... And if when trying to produce more energy, it makes my horse fizzy or it hops them up. Are there certain things that I can feed that still give the same energy requirements but not the fizziness? Yes. If we've got a particularly sharp horse, we try and reduce the starch levels. So we look to increase the energy from oil and fibre, um, which is a much slower releasing energy. Um, if we look at more of a younger horse then, how important are the nutritional requirements during a, a young horse's developmental stages? Well, the foal will grow to 95% of its size effectively in the first year of, of its life. Um, so we want to encourage steady, even growth. We don't want to see sharp, sharp bursts. So it's very important to, to monitor what the, the young horse is eating to make sure that energy levels are, are not oversupplied, but yet it's got all the nutritional requirements that it needs to grow. And, and mares in foal as well? Is there, is there specific dietary yeah. requirements for mares in foal? There's a perception out there that you know, as soon as a mares in foal you have to therefore feed it more. That's not the case at all. We recommend that the first eight months um, fetal growth is slow and the mare will probably do quite well on a maintenance diet and then beyond eight months we would be looking to increase its diet. Um, but what we would say is seek professional advice and, and talk to the experts about mares and, and foals um, when that stage arrives because every mare is different. Okay. And from younger horses then to your more elderly horses, do the nutritional requirements and dietary requirements change for, for a much older horse? Yes, absolutely. And, and that usually starts with the teeth in that older horses um, often struggle with, with chewing. And we would recommend in that case that the horse is fed a cube, which could be soaked to form a mash. Um, and again, the nutritional requirements, they will probably have increased nutritional requirements. And we would be recommending senior products, which usually have um, added vitamins and minerals and um, digestive enhancers to help them. So we've looked at horses. If we now look at ponies, um, do ponies' feeding requirements differ vastly from horses? Yes, usually ponies are known to be good doers. The native types put on weight much easier. Um, in the wild, ponies tend to lose their weight over the winter and gain it in the summer. In the domestic situation where we're keeping ponies in stables and rugging them up very well, they tend not to lose that weight over the winter that can then lead us into problems going into the spring and summer. Okay. When you mention problems spring or summer, are you talking sort of laminitis problems? Yes, exactly. And what, what can you do then if your pony is prone to laminitis, for example? Is there a specific way you could feed them to, to min minimise the risk of that ever happening? There are lots of ways to manage laminitics. Um, and uh, we would start with usually saying to people they need to get their hay analysed if they're feeding hay or haylage. Um, haylage we would not recommend usually for laminitics. Um, get your hay analysed, make sure that the um, starch and sugar levels in that are below 10%. If that's not the case, we would be looking at um, a laminitis trust approved um, forage replacer. And there are all sorts of things that you can do with regards to grazing, limiting grazing, turning out in the paddocks or in an arena, using grazing muzzles. Um, the research that we've done have shown that with grazing muzzles you can reduce the amount of grass consumed by up to 85%, um, which can make a big difference to a laminitic. So if a pony is a good doer, is there, is there still a requirement to feed them additional forage and hard feed? What we usually say with a good doer, with a pony is you could usually feed good forage, quality forage and a feed balancer and very rarely will they need supplementary hard feed. And you mentioned about ponies that, that drop off in the winter and then hold their weight or gain more weight in the summer. Do you have to alter your feeding requirements for a, for, for a pony like that? We would always say to people, the pony will, will lose weight in winter if it's left out without a rug on, but that's part of the natural cycle. And although we don't want to see skinny ponies, um, there's nothing unnatural about them losing a bit of weight in winter and then putting it on naturally in the spring and summer. Um, every horse is different. And is, is this more an issue for native ponies or do you get it for, say, riding ponies as well? Um, any horse or pony can end up with laminitis and we would all say that every horse or pony has to be managed carefully. Um, your good doers, your native ponies, do tend to put on weight more easily. Your riding ponies with a little bit of thoroughbred blood in perhaps might not do quite so well. So what would be your top tips for feeding a horse? Um, our top tips would be 
feed it as much roughage as possible um, for the good doer. And even with the, the three-star, four-star event horses, we would still say we would like to see 50% of their diet made up of forage. Um, feed a good quality compound feed with good um, quality proteins, good vitamins and minerals. Um, feed little and often, as many meals as possible. Um, allow access to grazing wherever possible as well. And what would be your top tips to feeding ponies? Ponies, we would recommend you monitor their weight very closely. Um, you can do that with a weigh tape to monitor changes, um, obviously your eye, and utilise feed companies, um, free services of care lines and weigh bridges to make sure that you can, you know what's normal for the pony. Um, restrict grazing if necessary. Allow them to lose a little bit of weight over the winter and regain that in the summer. That's their natural cycle. Thank you, Sarah, for your tips and advice. We hope you found this useful and do remember this is a guideline only and we do encourage you to seek professional advice from someone like Sarah if you do have any doubts as to what you should be feeding your horse or pony. We hope to see you soon again on horseradar.co.uk and do remember to keep checking for your tips from the UK's top producers, trainers and riders. Yeah.